Hello, beer tubers, and welcome to yet another Throwback Thursday with me, Peter, the master of hoppets. Today, kicking it old school with Fuller's. This is a beer that I think most of you guys have tried, and actually, this could be on a, just a second, like a plain old regular review, not like the Throwback Thursday tag, because I never reviewed this. I never did a full proper review of Fuller's ESB. What the hell? You know, this was one of those beers that I thought I was pretty sure I'd reviewed. I've talked, actually I have a video, like a Fuller's Brewery Tour video of the tour and the tasting. And in the tasting video, I think I talked about this, but that was it. And it's a beer I had many a times. And this, at one point in my life, was my all time favorite beer. When I was just getting into craft beer, uh, Fuller's and, you know, Badger Ales and a lot of uh, Wells and Young's, it was UK craft beer that, you know, piqued my interest. So like British beer, British ales, cask ales, all this stuff. And Fuller's was the first time where I had a beer where I was like, wow. Like, the others, they were nice, but when I had the ESB, it was the, that was before I graduated into these bad boys, as you see here. Like the London Porter and the Golden Bride, but that was the first time I was like, wow, and so hoppy. And then I discovered American IPA, and I was like, whoa, okay. And then, you know, my favorite style was ESB back then. It turned into be, you know, IPA instead. This was around uh, high school, I guess end of high school and yeah legal drinking age in Denmark is 16 so it was okay but um you know so ESB was my favorite beer style back in the day which is fun this is a style you never see many craft brewers do um Northern Monk did a very successful bitter I think it was kind of an ESB and a tribute to a great Yorkshire brewery you really know Samuel Smith so they did a little tribute and that was fantastic uh, I actually recently reviewed also an ESB from Fuller's, from their Past Master series, the 1980, I can't remember the specific year, which was a reboot recipe of the original recipe they did when John Keeling started working at Fuller's. I think it was his first batch even. It was to commemorate uh, when he left the brewery and resigned as brewmaster. I don't know with the quality and everything, because I haven't drunk this beer in years, and now they're owned by Asahi, so I'm not sure if the quality is the same and whatnot. You know, Asahi has all the stakes in the brewery, and the pubs and hotel chains and, and whatever, it's still the Fuller's family run business as it, as it used to be. So it went from being a, you know, regional size brewery, historic brewery, to now a macro brewery. That's the one of the tough things. I, I hope they haven't touched it too much. If they turn Fuller's into Witchwood, I would fucking, that would be so sad. So sad, because Witchwood just, when Boston took over, just slowly just went like, uh, and I'm really, Fuller's is so well known for the quality of beers as, as traditional British beers that I hope they keep it up. I mean, I've been to the brewery like three or four times. It's fantastic. Just they, they also, I think they closed the Moss and Arms per, uh, like permanently, which is a brewery right there, like right next to the original site. They can go in there and drink the Fuller's beers fresh, just brewed right next door. Why would you close that? You know, maybe you didn't have as much customers or anything. You're just like, that is one of those, like, the most historic things to have to a brewery. Like, your own pub that's been around for years. I think it's such a shame that it closed. It was so cozy to go. I'm so happy I got to go. Uh, but, yeah, again, a historic brewery and a big brewery for me because it's one of the breweries that, you know, made me really discover what, you know, was out there other than lagers. So I'm really thankful for that. So, yeah, it'll be really fun to dive into these. We're going to probably be trying these two tomorrow i mean this was before like you know this was uh, with the eye-opening big complex beer back then before i also tried the porter and, and graduated to that one and the golden pride and, and whatnot but I, you know i found these online i, I had a hard time finding this because for some reason it, the only fuller stuff you can really find in Denmark at the moment that's not old or at least beer that can last is the vintage ales and imperial porter and stout and it's been a long time, for, for some reason, it's not something I've seen easily available for a while. I don't know what's going on with that. If the, you know, distribution company and import company, there's something, I don't know, whatever. But I found it. It's not a fresh bottle. It's at least eight to nine months old. That's how it goes. Um, and right now, you know, with the whole Brexit thing, I can't just order it from the UK. You have to pay import fees and whatever. So that's not going to happen. So they had it here. So I picked it up along with these other ones that they had just to do some, some fun videos and have a bit of nostalgia in my life about beer. So this is a 5.9% ESP, extra special bitter, the stronger brewed version of the British bitter. Expect a style with lots of yeast character, this classic quintessential marmalade fruity yeast character 
if you're good at tasting, you can see how that is translated into the overly estuary and intense flavor you get in New England IPA. Uh, I definitely see some connotations when I drink like more ester forward British ales. That being said, no, no knock in New England IPA, they're fantastic, but so stuff like this. And, you know, not just that, it also used to be uh, known for being hoppy. They had like classic like Fuckles and war, uh, like Willamette's. No, Willamette's, did they use? That's not too classic because that's American, but I think they used a little bit of that in Fuckles, but you no, know, Fuggles and Goldings and Target and uh, I think even Bramlin Cross and, you know, a lot of classic British hops and beers like this. And also classic British malts and what the British are known for, at least in my mind, some of the, some of the things they do best is fantastic pale ale based malts like Golden Brahmas, for example, and their crystal malts. British crystal malts are fantastic, especially Thomas Fawcett, for example. Uh, so, you know, a lot of history behind this beer. And, you know, it's just something I'm really looking forward to drinking. I just wanted to get some of these things out as well because it's, you know, it's something I think is really fun to look back at. So let's dive in here, 5.9%. Uh, we have actually on their website, the weird thing, if you go to photos.co.uk now, there's nothing about beer, it's all about the hotels, but there is a web shop where you can buy the beer. Odd, but on there, there's info. And it's just saying that the malts used for this is pale ale, crystal and chocolate malt. Chocolate malt, it must just be a touch, but you know, for complexity. Hops are Goldings and Fuggles. So. Classic, classic British ESB. I'm so excited. And definitely a whole lot fresher than the vintage bottle I had there from the uh, Past Masters series because that was years old. So even got it in the proper glassware. I still have this. I bought this at the brewery back in 2009 or something like that. So it's exceptionally crazy that I still have that. Or maybe 10. But yeah, let's check it out. So it pours in, you know, a nice copper color, like copper rust orange, not much head, but what's there was nice and frothy, slightly off whitish in color. Yeah, let's check out the aroma for the first time in years on Fuller's ESB. That smells like quintessential British beer, and I'm so happy this has been stored well because there's no sign of oxidation or anything. I could also see it on the cap when I opened it. There's no like air bubbles or anything. That can often be from that, but also like sometimes it's also due to uh, Pasteurization. But man, it smells so classic. I'm getting so much marmalade on toast. Like totally marmalade on toast. Toasted bread, spread of orange marmalade, loads of it. And that's part of the hop character you get from these British hops. And then also, and big time yeast, like a lot of that orangey, fruity, almost like juicy overripe profile, but not like the same. It's not the same as New England IPAs because you play differently with hop additions and whatnot, but and also, you don't ferment the often as, you know, as warm, but it's these subtle, unique, you know, fruity esters, almost like an overripe stone fruit. You can totally see the connotations towards New England IPA in the yeast sense. And then like a very nice, bready malt backbone to it, you know, classic, just like bready, biscuity malt, hints of like toffee caramel, all, just like fresh caramel malt, really. Not maybe so much caramel toffee. They are there, those notes, but it's like just a handful of super fresh caramel malt. And then hints of like a, maybe a coca nib, but just, it's like just a sprinkle of it, like super light. But again, this is also compared to a lot of modern craft beer, a schooling in, you know, subtle but complex flavor. We love all the hype, I don't know how hype these are, but big intense beers, you know, and that's what I rate the highest, but this stuff, you know, is also really nice to check out once in a while. But yeah, I'm rambling up, let's check it out. Cheers, guys. Mm -mm. I'm glad I rambled, because it's at the perfect temperature. Wow, that is so nostalgic. As good as I remember, exactly. That is so fucking nostalgic. <laughs> Man, I used to adore this beer hard. I, I don't know if they still bottle condition. They used to back in the day. It doesn't look like it anymore. Cause I don't see any gunks or anything. It's just very clear, but it's tasting pretty much like what I remember. And it's not a mind blowing USB or anything. But it's just essential and quintessential and dead on to style. I think you could probably easily find some better 
more modern interpretations, even though there's probably not a lot, but if you want an easy to get classic ESB that's exactly this dial, this is it. Much better than that age bottle. The age bottle was really fun, but, and that was bottle conditioned, but it, it was good, but you can really see it suffered in age. This is much more bright and, and flavorsome. I think I would love to drink this straight, you know, go there again, go to the brewery. Hopefully they still do like some kind of tours with tastings. That would be so fun to just have super fresh yeah, London or ESB from Fuller's again. But yeah, the flavor follows the nose. Not a crazy thick mouth feel. It's dry and it's, you know, it's like medium. It's pretty much what you find in almost like, you know, pale ales and whatnot as well. Like, uh, not American pale ales, of course, but something, of, you know, you guys know. I'm just trying to talk to people who might not have tried this, but just what do you find in ESB or maybe an English pale ale or something like that. It's bitter too. It's not like smack in your face, but there's definitely a substantial bitterness, but think bitterness of like a Pilsner or something like that, around the 40 IBU territory probably. And then maybe 30, something like that. And then it has like this substantial hop character with loads of esters. And then like a nice, like malt backbone. Caramel, freshly, t really freshly toasted bread with marmalade on, orange marmalade. And sometimes you get, you know, this on cask, and because it's on cask, you also sometimes get a little bit of diacetyl, so you almost get like butter toast with marmalade. You know, it's it sounds a bit silly, but it just it's exceptionally great. Like a lot of these beers really shine on cask, and I know cask got a bad rip for a long time because of people, I used old people drink and whatnot. But you see it coming back a little bit. Some breweries doing this kind of stuff, even modern breweries. I mean, Steeberry. It's last time I was at the uh, Oregon Beer Fest, they had a cask on. So it's, you know, it still happens. It's, it's cool to throw back to history like that. Uh, you know, I still think there's room for, you know, cask ale and not just keg beer, even though keg beer is also fantastic. There's room for both. That's what I'm trying to say with these videos as well. Or this, but yeah, that marmalade on toast, it's, you know, great. Then there's a bit of nuttiness. There is like that, Fresh caramel malt, besides the orange, again, a bit of stone fruit. It could also be like peach marmalade or something, orange peach marmalade. And then there's a hoppiness, which is like slightly citric, grassy, hedgerow, um, you know, a bit more fruity than, you know, what you expect from, if we talk classic beer, like German hops and whatnot, and not as spicy and whatever. There is a bit of spice to it, but maybe not as much, just a bit more fruitiness, but yeah. Classic, classic beer. And again, 5.9, almost 6%. It is fairly strong in, in English terms, at least traditional English beer terms. But yeah, this is really good. Nice, still holds up. Straight 90, benchmark, ESB. Fuck, this was fun to revisit. I'm so glad I got a ball. I'm gonna savor this, because this is probably the last time in a long time that I get to try this, so. We're really looking forward to these because I know they're probably going to be better because I liked them more back in the day. But yeah, this is really nice. So if you guys had a chance to try Fuller's ESB, their champion ale, their most awarded ale, let me know what you thought of it. I'm pretty sure every one of you guys watching have tried this at some point in, in your life if you've been following the channel for a while. So let me know. And as always, with comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Ring the bell for future notifications about videos. And yeah. I'm going to say cheers. Check out Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that social media jazz. Untap. And say cheers and see you guys in another Throwback Thursday. Maybe with more Fuller's beer. We'll see because, you know, I haven't reviewed this. I also got some, uh, not British, uh, Belgian. There we go. What the hell? Belgian beer to do on this. So we have some stuff. So cheers, guys. And see you in another Throwback Thursday.